<coughs> okay, hello. Uh, we want to continue our lecture, uh, Werkstoff und Bruchfähigkeit, uh, Fracture Toughness of Materials. And uh, <coughs> uh, we, we are, where are we so far? We have characterized uh, the parameters determining the fracture toughness. Uh, we have discussed some experimental findings to fracture toughness and uh, so various fracture mechanisms at, uh, depending on temperature and loading rate. And then uh, in the last lecture we have uh, started to discuss the most important fracture mechanism. And uh, we have started to do that with uh, cleavage fracture. And uh, what we have found is we have found that a cleavage fracture proceeds on certain crystallographic uh, planes in body centered uh, cubic metals and in hexagonal metals. Cleavage fracture very rarely occurs on uh, face centered cubic uh, metals. And uh, then uh, we have discussed uh, something what we called uh, ideal brittle fracture. And uh, <coughs> uh, we have found some, uh, we have discussed some experimental findings to cleavage fracture. For example, we have found that the uh, stress where cleavage fracture occurs uh, in a tensile experiment. Uh, depends on the grain size of uh, materials. <clears throat> then we have discussed the whole batch model, uh, which describes the dependency of uh, the yield strength on the grain size. And similarly, the model of straw can uh, describe that uh, variation of uh, fracture stress uh, for cleavage uh, on the grain side. And uh, finally, we have discussed some mechanism uh, to form a crack nucleus. And the mechanism to risk can be. And so where are we now? Uh, and we come now to the next section. It is, I think, the section 4.1.5. And uh, that is uh, the RKA model. The RKA model. Uh, <clears throat> the name comes from uh, researchers, uh, Richie, Not and Grace. And maybe I will go to uh, presentation. Yeah. Okay, I think maybe better. <clears throat> okay, and uh, here we find the principles of the RKA model. Uh, what you see here is uh, a crack tip schematically drawn uh, and uh, the variation of the normal stress in front of the tractive. And uh, as we know, uh, the stress uh, increases when you come nearer and nearer to the tractive. And uh, for a linear elastic material, you have a singularity and for maximum normal stress is reached even infinity. <coughs> And uh, the reaching out in Kreis model says now that uh, cleavage fracture can occur when uh, a certain critical stress for cleavage, 
the so-called Liebig slice, here being Liebig sigma f, is x heated over a certain critical length. In fact, critical length is denoted as LF. Okay? So I, uh, you see here, I could load uh, F1. In fact, uh, uh, criterion is not yet fulfilled because uh, uh, only uh, the uh, critical fractures like sigma f is only exceeded in some uh, region uh, smaller than LF. So you have to increase the load now. The uh, uh, criterion is now fulfilled. <clears throat> we know now that uh, in reality, uh, materials are not uh, linear elastic. And uh, usually you have elastic plastic materials. And so uh, the stresses do not go to infinity uh, at the crash tip. And here is shown the result of some finite element computations. Uh, and here again is plotted the maximum normal stress in front of the crash tip uh, as a function of the distance to the crash tip. And you see here now that. Uh, the strain hardening uh, exponent has a n, has a uh, significant uh, influence uh, on, the, on the values of the maximum stress levels in, uh, in front of the crash tip. For an ideally plastic material, if uh, there is no strain hardening, that uh, maximum stresses reach three times the huge stress, sigma naught. But uh, the maximum stresses can become much larger, significantly larger, if you have materials with a large uh, strain hardening exponent. For example, uh, for a strain hardening exponent n is 0.2, you can reach uh, well five times the huge stress in front of the crash tip. What you also see that uh, dotted lines here is that in reality, uh, due to the planting of the crash tip, uh, the stresses decrease very low, uh, very, near to, very near to the crash tip. <coughs> okay. So uh, let's go back to the RK. R model. It's a very simple model and therefore it, uh, people like it, especially that people who work uh, uh, in numerical modeling of fracture processes because it is very easy to implement, for example, in finite element computation. Uh, however, the problem is how, what is the critical distance LF? Yeah. And how is the critical distance uh, somehow connected to the microstructure of materials? And, uh, okay. And usually, uh, one would like to, one, uh, <coughs> One would guess if I have here the crash tip and for example, I have a, a material uh, which contains uh, particles. Then, uh, and the particles are prone to, to fracture. Also. The, the cleavage fracture in such a material and the critical microstructural uh, parameter should have something to do with the uh, interparticle distance. So that should be something like LF star. Or in some, uh, if you have materials where there are no such uh, critical particles, that can break easily. For example, LF uh, should be proportional or should be equal to the grain size. And so on. Yeah. Uh, however, it is so that unfortunately, 
fait Critical thinking, LFK, if you make tests in, in materials, you find that LF uh, is proportional to 2.7 times for green size or to 1.8 times for uh, interparticle distance. And so uh, that uh, is the problem of the model that you have no clear physical meaning of that critical distance uh, LF. And therefore it seems that uh, that uh, RKR model, although it is so convenient to use and rather simple, uh, probably is too simple to describe for reality. Okay.